Hi, everybody. <laughs> I think we're on. We're ready. To, we're ready to go. And welcome to another performance of It Has Nothing to Do with Age or Gender. And of course, across from me is my partner who created this great music to introduce the show today. Tony. He's still, still, <laughs> still, still Tony. Tony. Or slug, whatever you want to call me. Well, he's been <laughs> called worse. He's been called worse, and uh, we'll, we'll probably get into that because of the guest that we have here today has stories about Tony, many, many stories, and he's a great communicator and really funny. And it's my pleasure to introduce Chuck Mather. Thank you, Chuck. Hello, Frank. <laughs> Hi, Tony. <laughs> Hi, Chuck. <laughs> now, 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 today, uh, of course, the show is about mental toughness, and uh, Chuck is a good example of that. And we're going to talk about his exploits and some of the tough things he's done in his life. Um, but before the we. The toughest thing is hanging out with you guys, I think. <laughs> let's, let's, let's get let's get that right out on the table. I'm glad I'm glad it's out on the table now, and uh, so this will be a challenging show to say the least. And that's why Chuck is here because he's very clever, very clever. But before we get into all his cleverness, which will come across, there's a quote here by James Bryant Conant that I'd like you to respond to in terms of how it applies to you and <laughs> you and you and, <laughs> you and your life chuck and you'll, you'll, you'll i think you'll like the quote it's behold the turtle he makes progress only when he sticks his neck out when you started with this um, behold the turtle <laughs> <laughs> I, I was ready for the comments to begin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then you went on with the rest of that stuff. Uh, you dropped your watch. I dropped, I dropped the... Uh, okay, it's good. It's good. Uh, <coughs> I've never really considered myself a turtle, but I've often stuck my head out. And, and so I suppose in, in that fashion, I would relate to that particular saying. Tell us how uh, you stick your head out. Because I know it's been more than once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, going clear back to the young days, you know, volunteered for the Marine Corps. Uh, sticking your neck out. Uh, Tony <laughs> copped out and joined the Air Force. So he kind of <laughs> kept his head tucked in quite well, a bit. We protected you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> from? <laughs> from? From? Well, yeah. From whoever, me, I just listened. We protected from whoever was talking about him. Yeah, the, the, <laughs> the thing I remember about Tony in the Air Force mm -hmm. is uh, he was tall enough to rip the blades off of the fans. In <laughs> he remembers that story. <laughs> in the, uh, in the, uh, the, the bay <laughs> where, where they stayed. So that was his thing. Uh, he drank in those days, and uh, he would come in, and the fan would be going, and he'd jump up and grab a blade and rip it off. I heard that same story. Uh, oh, we're right here in this room? No, no. no <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the trail. On the, on the trail. Uh, just heard that. Okay. Uh -huh. well. Then you had, you, had, you had stories about gifts you got while you were in the Marines, and one particularly that you thought was the best gift that anyone ever sent you. I think it was from a grandmother, or a, it was about a, oh, a, a, a I got something to do with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. my, uh, my Aunt Marita, uh, concerned about my plight in Vietnam, decided that uh, she needed to take care of me, and she sent me a coffee can that was full of cookies, and which was pretty nice, mm -hmm. uh, except it took them about six weeks to get to where I was, so there was nothing but stale crumbs. <laughs> <laughs> but it was the thought that count. Uh -huh. But buried in there was a gravity knife. It, it, it looked like the old stilettos that you, you go like that. And the thing had a blade about that <laughs> long, but that was how she was going to take care of me while I was <laughs> overseas. She's protecting you. She was protecting me. Okay. Yep, Aunt Marita. So why did you go join the Marines? 
Uh, I wasn't a particularly good student in those days, and uh, the police came to an apartment that I'd cut school and was uh, playing playing with some young ladies and a couple of other friends. And uh, playing, <laughs> playing. <laughs> we're playing cards. <laughs> playing cards. <laughs> and uh, they they uh, didn't see the humor in us cutting school and playing cards. And I thought, hey, I know how I'm going to get out of this. I joined the Marines. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> it Nobody worked. was mad at me anymore. <laughs> You're how old at this point? 17. 17. Yeah. So you're old enough to... Uh, well, I had to have my mom sign for me. And she did? And she did. Gladly. Yeah. yeah. She, Gladly. She, yeah, she was probably ready to get rid of me. <laughs> was there a cake and for your going away yeah. or... or uh, no, no. No but, celebration? But there was not a footprint on my rear end either, so it was okay. It was okay. It was okay. Yeah. okay. And you spent how many years in the Marines? Three. Three. Okay. And you saw active yep. duty? Uh, yep. I was with the first Marines to land in Vietnam. Wow. First ones there, wow. yeah. First ones there, and of course, one of the first ones to leave. Yeah. Well, you were there in 68 during Tet, no. weren't you? weren't. I no, thought you were. I, no, I was there in 65. 65, so, yeah, oh the gosh, first, you the first, were really? first ones there. Wow. First ones there. Now, <coughs> there wasn't a Vietnam when I joined the Marines. You know, that was just this thing off there. So uh, I learned about it real quick. Yeah. So, what so was talking th about putting your neck out. Yeah. yeah so what was it like to go to Vietnam back in 1965? It, it, well, the, the Vietnam, there was nothing there militarily when I got there, uh, other than we we were um, in in the Phu Bai area near Way, and there was an army compound that had been established there that supposedly was a top secret listening post for China and so on. And it was all barbed wire and all this stuff. Well, we were there to protect it. And when we first got there, we were from Hawaii. We're the Hawaiian Marines. And in our duffel bags, of course, we're Aloha shirts. And when we first got there, we're strutting around in our Aloha shirts. And that lasted a few days. And then we had to wear something that looked appropriate. And then we had to wear hard hats, and then we had to wear flak jackets, and as things progressed, it went from nothing to a war. And, uh, you started it? I, I that's think, what I happened. Think, I think I perpetuated. That's now why I, I that's why it didn't end for years and years. <laughs> <laughs> so I just got it rolling really good. So you came out of it okay then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I know, I know a lot of Vietnam veterans and almost all of them that I know that were actually there in, in any kind of a realistic world is in some kind of a disability situation, um, as I am. It's my ears. I can't oh, hear. Oh, your ears. Yeah. yeah. And there are too, too many explosions going on. Okay. So the rest of me came out pretty good. And your excuse? I have none. I did fine. And you were there... I was there for a year, and just but I was in was 70, 71. It was pretty. Well, it was sort of winding down then. Not you know, not until 75 we didn't get out. I don't think. But in 71 we were transferring yeah. everything over to uh, to Vietnamese at that time, and my biggest problem was aircraft engine noise. But <laughs> yeah, that, I'm yeah. surprised your ears no, are still working. Your ears yeah, they are okay. Do. My ears are fine. I never mm -hmm. wore ear protection. Yeah, yeah. you didn't wear anything back in those days. Well, and you we, must be younger than Chuck. And we used to spray tons of. But I'm younger than you. <laughs> <laughs> of course, nearly everybody in the world is thinking about that. <laughs> thanks, Chuck. Thanks. Thanks. Okay, so you were there three years, and then you came home. Came home and uh, back ended, to school. Ended up uh, no, ended up uh, in 29 Palms for the last year and a half of the service, and I was on the Marine Corps skeet team. So uh, I traveled all over the place shooting for the Marine Corps. So you're a good shot? Uh, yeah, I'm pretty good shot. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> I got those days. Uh, I still have a couple of the trophies left over. So, yeah, I had a lot of silver. So that was but good that, duty. That was really good, good duty. duty. <laughs> so I, on, on Monday and Tuesdays were my days off. Wednesday and Thursday I worked at the Skeet Range. Friday was a travel day, and I competed Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> so how does mental toughness... And you guys paid for it. <laughs> how, 
Well, <laughs> how does mental toughness? Uh, as as each, a, as, each a each shooting, shooting, as a skeet shooting, shooting. It, it's it's a it's a very much a mental game. You know, it's it's not. Uh, you know, here's this thing flying out there, and you're trying to shoot it in in a competitive situation. And uh, so that I think uh, that started started showing that I do have. A, uh, we call it in my family the Mather curse, and uh, almost everybody in the Mather family, in one form or another, has the Mather curse, and that's that competitiveness. And well, we're, whether it's not necessarily me always beating Tony as the important thing <laughs> in life, uh, but it's, just it's one always the, just one it's, of the it's always. <coughs> A challenge against myself to to go that extra little bit. Um, I have a very difficult time when I go for a run, not setting my watch, and I'm constantly getting back. Say, oh, okay, how was how did I do this time? How did I do that time? Now I have a GPS on my on my <laughs> on my phone, <laughs> so I can go set that the watch. <laughs> 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 so that's the that's the math or curse. Uh, I have it. Uh, uh, you've probably heard of my niece Tara Doobie. Uh, she definitely has it. My son has it. My my oldest sister. Uh, uh, she left home when she was 14 uh, to become a ballerina, and so she okay. she traveled the world dancing. Okay. Uh, my my youngest sister uh, was a uh, was a ranked nationally ranked biathlon by mm. athlete. By no athlete. kidding. Yeah. Okay. She could shoot too. No, she was running and, and swimming. Is that running, uh, swimming? Bi biathlon, that, okay. or whatever you call it. I don't know, maybe I'm not using the right word. Okay. So she was competitive as hell. And uh, so the, the whole family is driven in those kind of fashions. So, so, um, go ahead. No, so go did ahead. your son tell you the story uh, when we, we ran, you know, the, up at the Ryan <laughs> He came running by me just before the right. end. He, he was <laughs> running, <laughs> running. Was he running? He was on the ground. He just got off he the ran, horse yeah. and he, he started running. He ran by <laughs> He runs by and finally passed an old guy. <laughs> he, he told me that. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely yeah, so has it. He, he definitely has he, it. Yeah, he has it, and he, he also has a sense of humor, unlike his dad. So. You have a sense of humor. Oh, I do? Oh. <laughs> okay, so how does the competitiveness and mental toughness relate? Because I think you were essentially telling me, in part, telling us the definition of your definition of mental toughness. I, I think that's exactly what it is. It's the competitiveness. Um, I, I don't. I, I've never thought of myself as mentally tough. I think of myself as competitive, and and. What that means is, I don't give an inch. Give an inch. Explain. Give an inch. Uh, I don't. I, I'm not going to hesitate on the hill. <laughs> I'm. I'm not going to uh, uh, give up on the horse. I'm not going to um, play a game of chess and look and say, "Oh, geez, uh, I'm in trouble." I guess I'll just back out of this. I'll, I'll, I'll go till by God there's nothing left in me. Push on. Yeah. And you beat him every time we run. <laughs> don't, don't believe him. <laughs> don't believe him. <laughs> Is there now, another now side Tony, of the story? Now Tony beat me one time. One time. One time, but he was on a horse. You're on the ground. No, I was on a horse too, but he came in ahead. Oh, of he me. beat yeah, you. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know. know. I'm. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> come on, come on. Well, there was a, I don't know how long ago it was. It had to be a while ago, though, running up stagecoach. Chuck is behind me trying to catch me. Well, he started off 30 minutes ahead of no, me. No, I didn't stop off 30 <laughs> minutes ahead of him. Did I catch you? No, you didn't, no, I didn't catch, catch you. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't let, he did not back off though because I kept trying to slow down a little because I was killing myself staying ahead of him. <laughs> and every time I did, I'd hear him coming back up on me. So I, was, I was wheezing too, wasn't yeah, so I? So I had to take <laughs> off again, so he did make me hurt myself. <laughs> Some of the best <clears throat> runs we've had, uh, Tom, Christoph, and, and Tony and I used to run at lunchtime. And uh, just this nice little, about a three-mile loop we would do. And coming up the last, there was a couple little hills, that last little bit. And one of us, and it was never me, because I'm not <laughs> particularly <laughs> aggressive on, in these things, but one of us would That's start, what you're telling start us. creeping up. I said I'm not aggressive. 
I said, I, I am competitive. I'm not aggressive. The difference being? <laughs> I don't know. I just, <laughs> I, just, I just made that up as we <laughs> went along here. <laughs> okay. Uh, and one of us would start creeping ahead, creeping who'd, who'd ahead. Who would be the one? Uh, Take your pick. It, 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 yeah, it, it de depended on the day. It didn't. It didn't and, and pretty soon, pretty soon, we're all just all balls out <laughs> up the hill. And finally, somebody would say, we're walking at the telephone pole. <laughs> <laughs> and, we, and then telephone pole, phew. We, we were honorable people. We stopped. At the the <laughs> Isn't that right, Tony? Yeah, that is right. Uh, so those, those are some good runs. <laughs> so pushing. 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 Yeah, always, always, always pushing. pushing. And uh, e even, e even if you're not with somebody else, always pushing. How do you think you, do you talk to yourself? Do you tell yourself? Do you have to tell yourself to push when you're no. alone? No. You don't use any self-talk while you're... I'm usually thinking about sex. Sex. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's self-talk. <laughs> <laughs> and I just keep going faster. If I run a faster. little faster. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll have to try that. <laughs> so you don't. Well, you still could because you're young, but he, <laughs> there's no hope for him. <laughs> well, I doubt that. I doubt that. I'll challenge. I'll challenge you to that. All yeah. right. So so basically, the mental toughness shows up running. And it doesn't take much if you're running with Tom or Tony. That's correct. Yeah. Mm. But okay. and, it, and it, again, it's not just running. It's pretty much anything I'm, I do. Is there anything that you're not competitive with? Yeah, basketball. You're I'm not? a lousy basketball player. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So where does this Mather curse come from? <clears throat> How did? You know, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I was thinking uh, about that. It, Figured you'd be asking questions along these lines, uh, and and I, I thought, you know, I, I don't know. And when I was when I was a kid, um, my dad was a very domineering, uh, opinionated person, and and his what's his name? Lucian. Lou. Lucian. Lou. 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 Okay. And he um, uh, he thought the only thing that would make a success out of his kids is the academic world. And, and m well, my sister Marilyn will start with her, the oldest sister. She was far from wanting anything to do with the academic world. She was a dancer. And, and many, many, many bloody, not, not physically bloody, mm -hmm. but mentally bloody battles in the household as, as she finally got, it, got her way and left for New York when she was 14. Really? To go dance. That's a big deal back yeah. then. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. So, what did your dad say about this? Oh, he, 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 it was, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know the words. I was too young. I was four years younger than she was. Okay. But uh, uh, it was not a pleasant time in our household. Uh, but, you know, that kind of was it because she went to New York and or wasn't going dance. to school. It was da dance. Da it was it dance. Was dance. That's not academic world. Not at all. But at not fourteen, at all. he did have to support her. In some oh yeah, he yeah. yeah, he supported her. Yeah, still, yeah. he still so supported he, her. You know, she won that battle, and in a, in a way that probably helped the rest of the kids, because uh, uh, my my next sister, uh, she was. An academic. She she was great at school, but she hated the home life, and uh, I hope she's never going to see this show. What's <laughs> her name? Linda. Linda. Okay. And and she um, ended up um, faking a pregnancy and marrying a guy, to, and when she was 17, to get out of the house. Okay. <clears throat> and then there's me, and I had no use for school. Do you think your father contributed to that? His push for academics. Probably. It, it could have been. I mean, what did it he what did he say to you during? Well, I, I like a, an example of, of his push um, when I was real young, I, maybe first grade, kindergarten, whatever. Um, uh, we're supposed to learn the alphabet, and after a couple of weeks of me not learning the alphabet, uh, he got wind of that. And he sat down. Did you have a learning disability? Not no. being able to. No. no, I just had no interest. <laughs> you didn't want to learn the alphabet. No, I didn't care. Okay. And uh, 
So the, the before that evening was over, I could recite the alphabet forward and backwards. <laughs> so, so he, his, made, he his, made you. Yeah, yeah. So how did he make you? I, I sat. I don't. You know, I don't remember okay. specifics. I just remember that that by the time the evening was over. By God, I knew forward and <laughs> backward. <laughs> and boy, did I love the alphabet after that, I can tell you. <laughs> so my, my whole thing was playing. I love sports. That was, that was, that was me. And uh, You could get out of the house playing sports yeah. all day long. Sure. Where and, was that? Where would you grow up? Uh, at, at that time, I was in Southern California. Okay, another Southern California. Yeah. <clears throat> but, you, but you did say you're... You you had the Mather curse, and your dad was competitive also. No, I mean, well, which, it, yeah, he may have been competitive, but mm -hmm. not in the sports world. Okay. You know, he, he he was in the business world, and that's that was his what life. What did he do? Um, it, it, he sold things. He was a sales salesperson. Okay, yeah. okay. Right. And so he probably had the curse in his own way, but uh, um, he he his drive for his kids were to follow in. Doctors, lawyers, right. you know, the, that, Did he that have world. that in his background or no, he just, no. he wanted that that's, for his kids? That's what he thought success was. Success wasn't hitting a home run. Success was uh, uh, A on your spelling test. And, uh, and that, that, you know, that wasn't, I, I ultimately got A's on my spelling test, but that was after I went to college. <laughs> In college, psh, I was on her list all the time. So yeah. you liked school at yes, then? Finally. Yeah, finally. Finally. Yep. After how many years? Long time. You know, I was after Vietnam, after the after the service. <laughs> so you grew up? Yeah. And you yeah. you didn't have to fight him over that at no. that point? No, not at that point. Not I was, at that point. Uh, and, and again, talk about the competitiveness. Um, uh, he may He may have been willing to help me. In college, he may have. I'm not gonna financially. Say yes, yes, financially, but I wasn't going to go would, to you him would, for a you would, you red would do for that. So <laughs> I, I uh, first two years of college, I was working a full time job and taking a full course at college, and uh, unheard of today. Oh yeah, you can't do that today. Yeah, yeah. Well, nobody would. Sounds nobody, like you. Yeah, nobody would you, do that. You, yeah. you said you wouldn't take a cent. And you're, you know, you didn't, you didn't even think about asking your parents. Well, they didn't have the money yeah. to do it. It was another yeah. issue. Another issue. Okay, so father is school, school, school. And mother? Mother, um, as I said, he was very domineering. Uh, mother was, I, I think, ended up kind of this milk toast. She couldn't okay. stand up to him. Well, and who could? Yeah, who, yeah exactly. Uh, my youngest sister, as it turns out, was the, uh, of my three sisters, my youngest sister is the one that, that, had the, the, the only really working relationship with him. Uh, my two older sisters were cut out of his will entirely. I was at least mentioned in his will, but I didn't get anything. And the youngest sister got it all. She got it all. <laughs> yeah. Was she the uh, biathlon? Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I, I think uh, he contributed in some fashion. You would probably know since you're the doctor uh, uh, how he contributed to the uh, the, Putting the well rounded perfect person <laughs> I am today. <laughs> <laughs> cute, 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 cute. Yeah. Right. So uh, when the sports that I that I participated in back in those days was bootleg sports. You know, he, he would he in in high school the only sport I could play in high school was wrestling. And that was because it didn't cost anything. Mm -hmm. No equipment. No equipment. And uh, uh, somebody took pity on me somewhere along the line and actually bought me a pair of wrestling shoes and ear, ear protector yeah, things. Right. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, no equipment. So that's what I could, I could do. So now, the other thing I did. But what did he school, say about you wrestling? Was that? He, he didn't, he pretty, pretty much didn't know. Oh, my my, par my oh, parents had split about okay, that time, okay. so different different households. So but he didn't know that you were wrestling. I, you wouldn't tell him. I either. wouldn't tell him. It, you, that's not that's not part of our life, you know. If if I if I had done something good in school by some chance, <laughs> I would have told him. Like a, because that would like I, I would like a grade. Yeah, yeah a grade. he'd have said, "Hey, had a boy." <laughs> that that would be yeah, it. That, that would a boy. be the boy. That a boy. Yeah. So, uh, and then we had a kind of a loose um, boxing club in town, and I boxed. And okay. again, 
what uh, you know that you he didn't I know. didn't have no you I didn't don't need I didn't a lot of equipment I, yeah. the, the gloves were there <laughs> okay and uh, and I was more than happy to beat up somebody <laughs> 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 sounds like sound, sounds like Chuck. <laughs> What's changed? <laughs> Not too much has uh -huh. changed. Yeah. Okay, no. so you were very physical growing up. Yeah, I held physical. I held the record, by the way, Which maybe one? even to this day, of missing all but fourteen days of school one <laughs> quarter and still graduating. How did you pull that off? Uh, it, even though, <laughs> even though I was going this direction, I still was reasonably intelligent. And I, I know after missing, after missing days and days and days of, of a particular class, I show up one day and the, and the instructor says, hey, you, there's no way in hell you can pass this class. And I said, well, what do you mean? And he said, well, you haven't taken this test or this test or this. And I said, well, give me the tests. And I took them and passed them. <laughs> <laughs> so you didn't need school. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, I did. So you're not telling anybody to no. follow that, oh, no. follow oh, that no. way? That was just one of those particular things. You know, I, there's some things that, that you know, I could do. So how would mental toughness apply to school, schoolwork? Well, it, it applied much later. Then it didn't apply to okay. school because there, did, was, there was no mental toughness. There. How did it apply later? Yeah. How did it apply? Uh, late when I finally was going to college and, and had you know, a different goal in mind. You had a goal. Yeah, to get through college. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and then it, I, I, was, I was totally able to sit down, here's the assignment, take care of it. Um, and and <laughs> uh, my girlfriend, What's funny? my girlfriend at the time who ended up my first wife, <coughs> uh, uh, we took a couple of classes together. And, and so, of course, if you take a class together, you should study together. Okay, that, 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 that makes, makes sense. sense. Okay, so uh, remember one particular time we were studying together. What class? Uh, it, must, it may have been a psychology class. <laughs> <I'm just thinking>. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, Chuck. Sure. Uh, actually, actually, the one I'm thinking of was a math class. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so we we sit down to to study together, and I had a full page and a half a page of notes. And from and the class? From the class, okay. so a whole, a whole semester's. And so the whole I, semester? Yeah, whole semester, and, and I went down through it, and I you know, looked at my notes, turned the page, went down through it, and it's okay. And I, so it took me 10 minutes, and I, and I said, okay, I'm done. Well, she had a couple of those, those loose leaf <laughs> things yes, that yes. Are f they were full of notes, and she was like on page three, and, and I said, I, I'm done, I'm ready. And she said, what? oh, she was furious. <laughs> and so we... we you know, I, nothing, I said, I'm not going to sit here for four hours while you read that stuff. Mm -hmm. So we went in and took the test, and uh, <coughs> I got a higher grade than she did. <laughs> 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 we, both, we both got, you know, A's, uh, uh -huh. uh, and I got a higher one. But she learned differently than I learned. Yeah. Um, I learned by sitting and listening, mm -hmm. and, and I'd make just a just a, something You're an cryptic. auditory learner. Yeah, and she learned by dutifully writing everything down and then yeah. learning from her, from the her writing. The visual, yeah. the visual. So I learned all year long. She learned at the last minute. Okay, okay. Yeah, there's different approaches yeah. To, uh, yeah. to learning. Yeah. yeah. And your approach is? What? <laughs> <laughs> to lear your approach learn, to learning. Learn. <laughs> to, to learning. I listen. <laughs> That's not all you do. You do trial and error. You know, I've talked to you a lot, and I've thought that you've listened. <laughs> <laughs> but the results of the conversation <laughs> go, go a totally different direction. I'm not sure that you well, do. Well, the best quote I like that you, you like to use is the one about failing and fail and fail better. Mm -hmm. That's me. <laughs> trial and error. Yeah, trial and error. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's okay. <clears throat> okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So do you think your sisters, you being younger in the hierarchy of children in the family, you're the third out of fourth yeah, sib. One. <coughs> How did you think maybe the sisters impacted, your older sisters impacted you in terms of competitiveness if they did I, with I, Yeah, w not much at all. Not much? I mean, we, we didn't, they, they were, they did girl things, I did guy things, okay. we, we didn't really interact. I mean, it's just normal household interaction. Okay. But, nah. At the dinner table, any competition? 
mean like spit wads going across the table? <laughs> well, what what would be the no, di what would be no. the dinner like? You know, I in, do you remember that in terms of what the dinner would be like with father and mother and the, the kids? Mm, not really. I okay. Mean, sit around the table. I I don't I don't recall. Could you much of could it. you talk? Yeah, I think there so. was. The, you think yeah. so? You think yeah. so? Okay. Yeah, I don't okay. think there was. Okay. Any, I don't think one of, one of those families where the where the kids you know, are supposed to sit there and be quiet and eat. Okay. But I, I do know. I do know that you had to take two bites of everything, <laughs> whether you wanted to eat it or not. Whose rule was that? <laughs> well, I, moms or dads? Yes. I don't know who. It was a rule, but, though. But but yeah. But we quickly learned that you know you take your two bites and <laughs> spit it in your napkin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you don't. It's already in your mouth. I don't right. know why you didn't swallow it. But that's but what napkins are for, <laughs> right? <laughs> excess. And then, excess then we had it. We had a dog at one time that loved to sit under the table, yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> I guess getting, so. getting all this, all this stuff. And no one knew that, right? No one knew what was going on. That dog was getting fat, though. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, Chuck, you're also a um, Tevis cup holder, and so Marines, college, when did horses, because you're from Southern California, when did horses come into your being? <clears throat> Somewhere in the late 80s, maybe about 1990, that timeline, Janie, my wife, comes home one day from work and she says, hey, this is really cool, I just you're bought up, a horse. You're up here now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just bought a horse. <laughs> and I, oh, okay, that's nice, honey. <laughs> Is that what you said? Did you did you did you bring it home in the car? <laughs> I don't see a horse out there. It says, oh, it's just this year old horse that a I old. that I a year old uh, yeah wow. year old horse that I'd be out walking by the airport and I saw this field and this horse I just did, every day I'd walk see this horse running around, and uh, one day the owner of the horse was there and I got to talking to her and she said I just can't deal with this horse and Janie said well I can <laughs> so Janie bought this horse uh, I remember how much oh maybe a thousand dollars really maybe maybe seven hundred dollars well a significant amount yeah oh yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, I, I realized that uh, where we live there's no fences so first thing I had to fence the <laughs> perimeter of the property <laughs> and uh, Oh, see this scar right here? Uh-huh. Show the fans. This the scar. That's not that's not from me trying to slit my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> that's from putting this fence up. Uh, there was I was driving a T post and that T post was not going uh, uh, and I pulled it up and hard as I can and it came off the top of the T post and the T post just laid my wrist open. Ooh. And about that time Janie and the and the kids were heading out going to the store and the blood splurting all over the place and I said, Oh geez, you know, so I'm hiding it. <laughs> I said, Okay, honey. <laughs> hiding the blood. Yeah, I'll see you in a little while. <laughs> are we hiding hiding well, your injury? Well, I, because they would have freaked out, you know. <laughs> You're protecting them, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, so I went and I took this big long chunk of skin and pulled it off. And <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I fenced the perimeter of the property. Bloody and all. And bloody and all. Yeah, I got that done. Oh, what a job. And so we bring the horse home. And How did you bring the horse home? A friend of mine is had cattle and we loaded the horse in the cattle trailer <laughs> <laughs> and brought the horse home. And how'd you get the horse into the trailer? Horse went in. Just went in. Oh yeah, it's not like your horses, Frank. <laughs> That's what I was thinking, Chuck. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I'm sure so, you do too. So bring the horse home, and I I knew nothing about horses. Janie had horses when she was a little girl. As it turns out, she knew how to ride horses. She knew stuff, but not everything that. A, 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 young horse. a grown up yeah. would know about horse because she was a kid when she had horses. So we bring horse home, turn it loose, and go in the house. A couple minutes later, we hear a noise out in the front. And what the heck? And the horse is standing on our front porch, <laughs> licking our front window. <laughs> and I said, gee, you know what? It's I thought you fenced the. Uh, I fenced the perimeter of the property. With no gate? Well, a, a gate to get into the property. Okay. Around so the whole just, house. So the around the, 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 the around perimeter the of house. the property. And I figured the horse would just stay over there. Would in horse stay away, land. stay away yeah. from the yeah, stay house. in horse land. Well, horse land. Yeah. 
So uh, I said, okay, I guess I got to fence him away from the house. So I fenced him away from the house. And he proceeded to eat the convertible top on our Mustang. Ooh. And I said, oh, geez, I guess I better <laughs> fence him away from our car. He did a lot of fencing. <laughs> so, more fencing. And then one day I come home, and he's eating the barbecue. <laughs> the barbecue. And, and, you know, that had these little briquette things in it. And, they, I mean, he, yeah. he was destroyed. And what the heck? So I guess I can't. <laughs> I guess I got to fence him out of here. <laughs> so bit by bit, he got fenced into his own little world. And uh, meanwhile, uh, he grew bigger and older, bigger and older. And uh, uh, Janie ended up just kind of liking him around, but didn't, never did anything with didn't him. Didn't ride him. Yeah. So uh, uh, she sent me. So like a, a pet, like yeah. your horses. Yeah, like they're a pet. They're, they're pets. Mine are old. Yeah. Okay. So this was a young pet. So Janie sent me to uh, Pat Pirelli. Uh, cold starting <laughs> class oh, for a whole week. Oh, great. I great, camped out with great. Pat Pirelli for a week and got the horse started and brought him home and uh, um, started riding him. And pretty interesting. So what uh, kind of saddle did you start with? Uh, I think the first saddle was a synthetic cowboy saddle. <laughs> 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 and uh, uh, a, a, my first ride... Didn't have a horn, did it? Yeah. yeah. Synthetic horn, wow. It, you know, it was one of those real cheapo... Cheap. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and the, the first rides, uh, I think the first ride I took, I was out for an hour and went, uh, when leaving the property, and we made it 100 yards. And? Uh, the, the horse uh, wouldn't go forward. He wanted to jump off here. He would <laughs> I mean, it was... <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> so we made it all of 100 yards in an hour. In an hour? In an hour. First and time? Yeah. Your first time ever on a horse? No, no. It was the first time I rode him out from oh, the house. Sorry. From the house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So the, the horse, uh, you know, he wasn't trying to buck me off or anything. But so you had ridden him inside yeah. the property? Yeah. Okay. And uh, so ultimately uh, got him where we moving out uh he would he would periodically just refuse to go just i'm not going to go uh the way to get him to go i'll turn around him and go backwards i can make him go backwards <laughs> and and one time i actually measured it one time i backed him up more than a mile really yes, backed really? him up two trails up hills down <laughs> and I, i'd turn him around go forward nope won't go forward turn around back we back, back how long back. did that take he still <laughs> rides that way <laughs> <laughs> Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 yep. Uh, I, yeah, a long time, but uh, but finally, finally he said, "Okay, I guess I have to go forward." And uh, so then, the, then the next thing that we had to overcome is we'd be going along a trail, and all of a sudden he just decided to leave the trail, and it could be, I mean, damn near cliff. He just <laughs> off he'd go, <laughs> and uh, uh, so I, I I learned to anticipate. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so we worked that out, and then I said, "You know what? There's this Tevis thing." So what, I year, what year could this? This was uh, ninety-four. So he's already got buckles yeah, already. Yeah. yeah. So ninety-four, I decided to do Tevis. So I went. Okay. I went. Not on this horse. Yeah, on this horse. On this. This horse with so the I synthetic saddle. No, by this time okay. I was riding in a Steuben uh, survival. Okay, you're and, you're big time and now. And uh, that that was horrible saddle. Was I, it? I rode. I, I did 150. I did camp, uh, not camp far west. Um, the one up out of Grass Valley. Uh, on the Nugget. No. When the Melissa Susie Souza put it on for years and years. Any anyway, uh, did that ride, and then my back was killing me in that stupid saddle because it's a real forward seat saddle. Okay. And I got rid of that saddle and. Ah, I wrote. I got a dressage saddle. Okay. <coughs> and uh, entered Tevis and finished Tevis. Ninety four. So, yeah. All right. <coughs> All right. Yeah. So that horse um, only did two endurance rides on him. <laughs> <laughs> did, were you going forward or backwards? <coughs> uh, Tevis, we went forward most of how the did you, How did you? How did? How did you get that horse to go forward? What did you? Uh, well, we, he, I could make him go backwards. Yes. Okay, so we'd go backwards, and he didn't like going backwards, but I could make him go backwards. Okay. So I'd, I'd go backwards 20, 30 feet, 
turn them around, say, let's go forward. Nope, turn around <laughs> until finally. Well, tell us, finally, tell the audience how you got him to go backwards. What was your? Oh, backwards, you have a bit in his mouth and you got your feet up here and you, you know, he doesn't, it's, yeah, you, you can drive him encourage back. him backwards. <laughs> okay. And, he, and uh, of course he didn't like that, but he wasn't, he was said to him, Dan, if I'm going forward, <laughs> until finally he learned that it's more comfortable to go forward than to back up for a mile. <laughs> so I, I out-stubbered uh, uh, him. Mental toughness. Yeah. yeah. You still pr pursued yeah. and pursued? Just, just pursued and pursued. Didn't give up. Didn't so, give up. Uh, yeah, so ultimately I, I sold that horse. And uh, uh, the lady that bought him, just loved him to death. She'd go out and groom him and take care of him. And uh, she made a, she qualified him as a patrol horse. Uh, on Tevis one year, she was uh, patrolling when Debbie Lyon came off mm -hmm. and crashed up yeah, in yeah. the high country. And she, w sh this lady was, was there, there. As, as, the, as the sweep. And there was the only place to tie the horse up was this little bush by a, by a beehive. <laughs> and, and, and he stood there. <laughs> why she took care of things. So yeah, so she she did a lot better with the horse than I did. Uh -huh. But uh, I saw the horse probably maybe eight years after I sold him to her. Uh, I was at a ride and she she said, hey Chuck, uh, Dusty's over there, tie the drink, go say hi to Dusty. <laughs> and I said, yeah, okay, go say hi to the old horse. And I walked up and I said, hey Dusty, how you doing? He spun around and bit me. He <laughs> 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 didn't forget, did he? He did not forget. <laughs> perfect. perfect. It was perfect. perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it just cracked me up. I said, okay uh, Dusty, uh, see you later. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So how many times so have you, go ahead. So that, that, was, that was my introduction to horses. And it was probably a great introduction in a, in a goofy way, but fitting me uh, in that he, he did everything a horse could possibly do that wasn't right. <laughs> and I had to figure it out. Mm -hmm. And that's really helped me later on figuring out horses. Okay. Uh, and so all the other horses I've had have been piece of cake after this guy. Well, just think for a moment. So this was in 94. He had done, Chuck had done one endurance ride with this horse. You wouldn't have qualified oh, for, I wouldn't te have qualified for Tevis now. No. at, at no. this particular <coughs> point. No. But yet you were able to do Tevis mm -hmm. without, with very little experience. How do you account for that? Uh, I had a lot of experience on trails. I was a runner. So first okay. off, I knew conditioning. And I, I conditioned that particular horse very similar to I conditioned myself to run big miles. Okay, when did you start? Let's, let's jump to running just for a second. Why don't you show the, the audience, Tony, your, or your right hand? My right hand? Yeah. And, oh, yeah, and how, how did that happen, Tony? The ground bit me. The ground jumped up and smacked me in the face. Just recently? It just recently. And what happened? I fell. Oh. <laughs> that gap. Well, get blood. Blood was coming. A lot of blood. A lot, lot of, of blood. No, nothing bad. And you finished your run? Yeah. Well, I had to. My truck was at the other end. <laughs> that's, that's the There's problem. No choice. That's the problem with running, especially you're running out on a trail someplace. You, you screw up and you say, oh, damn. But guess what? No one's gonna <laughs> you come still got to get back. <laughs> Before you get into the start of your running, I, there's a couple of stories that, that I know about, and Tony. Don't ask me. Your part, you, <laughs> you were going to bring a, a prop. I was. I forgot. Well, should we go into that? I think I know where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that goes. That's what I was afraid what he brought. <laughs> and, it, and it goes along with things. I was hoping that, that somewhere along the line, a discussion m might be had about Things that you find when you're out running. That's another story. This is this it's is a different story. This is a different. Well, let's talk about that story since I got this present in my hand. <coughs> a present, and this should be hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um, for years, when I'm running, I've found things, and uh, one of the thing <laughs> one of the things that I've done is when I found coins, uh -huh. I'll pick them up and I got a jar at home. I put the coins okay. in. Okay. And in anticipation of this conversation coming up, I counted <laughs> my coins. I had sixty-two dollars and twenty-six cents in coins that I've collected over 
years and that's years. That's a lot of running. Yeah, and it's a lot of pennies, I'll tell you. <laughs> a lot of pennies. And, and you don't mm -hmm. find a lot of coins when you're out on trails, but you know, you, you run all over the place and you find things. So uh, I pick up pennies and quarters. And uh, Now, I've, I've <laughs> actually found a few bills, but I don't put those in the jar. I put those in my pocket, so I don't know how much that is. I found a welding helmet that I still have in use today. A welding I, helmet? I found a nail gun, that uh, a, a Finnish nail gun. Yeah. Uh, a lot of screwdrivers and wrenches and things like that. Uh, one of the most unique. He didn't finds. say he's running through Home Depot. Yeah. yeah. Is no, that where yeah. he's running? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one, one of the. But one, one th of this, the most this in the bag is not from Home Depot. No. This mm, we know this. Yeah. I've we know this. <laughs> uh, the, this. This what's in the bag is a predecessor from Home Depot. You're gonna like this. You're gonna like predecessor. this. Predecessor. Yeah. Uh, when I was out running, and this is out in the woods along a barbed wire fence. Uh, this is a family show, right? But yes. I can say family. Well, we well, no. We're not you, sure. But you, <laughs> can, you can be a little okay. racy. Um, uh, <coughs> stuck on a barbed wire fence was a dildo. <laughs> a dildo. <laughs> and I'm running along, and I catch out a corner of my eye, and, and I about ten more steps, and I kind of ground to a halt. And I, what did I just see? <laughs> <laughs> and I turn around and go back, and I look at that, and what? And I mean, we're in, there's nothing around here. We're Is that in the, the jar woods. too? N no. Oh, no. <laughs> I, thought, I thought about it. <laughs> so I, I, I started to run again, and I said, No, you know, you you can't pass up something like this. Can't pass it up. So I went back, mm -hmm. and I, I didn't want to touch it. <laughs> so I got some leaves, Please. and I carefully plucked it off of the barbed wire fence, and I had a running pack on, and I tied it onto the running pack. <laughs> now you're running with a so, running with so a dildo. So the thing is flopping around as I'm this running down the, the trail. dildo. So I, I get home, and, and I said, now, now what? Janie's not here, so good thing. So I take it, and I put it in the dishwasher. In the dishwasher? And I washed it. <laughs> The dildo, <laughs> and so then I, you know, took it out. Then I was, it was okay to touch after that. You know, I used it's clean. Soap. It's clean. Yeah. It's clean. Yeah. So I put it away, and uh, didn't use Xerox or so Clorox, it was. It was. It was a while later that that something was coming up that it would be appropriate to expose a dildo to, and so I, I told Janie I had I had this dildo. We'll take it to this party or whatever. It was. <laughs> and and she said she said where'd you get it? And, <laughs> and I told her. And she says, you're going to touch that? And I said, well, don't worry about it. I put it in the dishwasher and washed it. Um, next week, I bought her a new dishwasher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cute. So, cute. okay. So cute. that's one of the, one of the interesting things. Um, uh, Tony and Tom and I were running one time. And we look on the ground as we're running along. You're going to love this story. You're going to love and, this story. Uh, and, and I say, holy mackerel, look at that. And what, what do you what do you see? I see a merkin, <laughs> and, and 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 he didn't hesitate to pick it up. <laughs> well, well, well I, I knew what a merkin <laughs> was. Yeah, you're right. We did. Dil <laughs> dildo to merkin. Right. No. So so yeah. So uh, <clears throat> I, I don't think either Tony or Tom knew what a merkin was at, at that time. time. At that time. <laughs> and uh, so we we take this thing back and where we where we took our showers and we hung it up in there and uh, what, what's a merkin? I told him you gotta go look it up you know it's a fascinating um, thing. <laughs> <laughs> so of course they had to go and look it up. Uh, a merkin is a hairpiece for a certain part of a female's anatomy <laughs> and we're not talking the head, we're not talking <laughs> armpits. <laughs> so that, that merkin has been passed around a few times. <laughs> Do you still have it? Um, you know, I don't know where no, it is. No, we don't know where it is. We don't, don't know what know happened to it. Who took the we Merkin? We don't know. Who yeah. took the Merkin? But, but since then, uh, you know, with, <laughs> my, with my underdeveloped sense of humor, I found that you can go online and for just a few bucks buy them. And so I have actually had Merkins sent to people. Jeez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, my God. What's really funny is nobody has ever responded back that's got one. <laughs> and I have a nice little letter about, you know, noticing it their, their, how they've been deprived in their life, uh, noticed in the shower. So you shower. sign your, you sign your oh, name? Oh yeah, they know it's coming from. So anyway, getting to <laughs> the package here. Um, <laughs> when I was running yesterday, I was out on the so trail. So you're back running? 
Because you've been yeah. injured. You've yeah. been, in, you've I, been well, injured. Well, I'm, I'm minimally r running, but yes, I am. <laughs> well, tell, yeah. before you get to, tell us a little bit about your injury. And uh, the, the, this, this last summer, I ran a relay race up in Oregon mm -hmm. with my uh, uh, son-in-law and, and a team. And getting ready for that run, uh, the more I'd run, the more my quads would hurt, especially running down hills. So, uh, but I was you know, you know, doing good miles uh, for me, uh, doing you know thirty plus miles a week, and and just nicely spaced out and built up. You know, everything. This may seem weird. I'm going to stop you just for a minute. Chuck is in the in in this book. He's one of my pacers for Western states, but there's other stories about Chuck. But okay, I just wanted oh. because we're running out of oh, time, oh, okay. so so that's why <laughs> I interrupted. Uh, but go ahead. So, uh, uh, legs, uh, especially downhills, my quads just hurt. And it's not from lack of conditioning because I've, I've been building, building. So go up and run this relay race. And the first l leg that I did was a, was a pretty steep uphill, three miles, and breezed up that. Three people passed me. I passed 11 people going up the hill. So psh, great. Felt good. My next was a kind of a runner's dream. It was, uh, it was nearly level, just slightly rolling, 200 feet of downhill along a stream, gorgeous, mm. mentally easy, um, seven miles. And I died. It was killing me to run that. My, my quads just hurt. Mm. I did it under an hour. So, you know, I was still moving along, okay. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, I'm going to go to the doctor. This is, this is nuts. So I went to the doctor. And doctor said, I don't know what's going on with you. And they sent me to a therapist, you know, the physical therapy. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, what I think it is, is your, your, the muscles are just multiple tears from years and years of abuse. Okay. <laughs> Over, <laughs> overuse, <laughs> overuse injury. Yeah, just, you know, I, I remember I've been running in big miles for a long, long time. So the, the, what they're doing or what they were doing is deep massage, trying to bust everything up. And then... Uh, um, ice and stretching. So that's what I'm doing and it doesn't seem to be making any difference. So anyway, so, but we'll, we'll stick with the results. So you haven't done any uh, pictures of your, of your, of your thighs? No, no. Oh. So th this is kind of the first. That'll be next yeah, pictures. Yeah, the first yeah. step. If so, this, if this doesn't yeah, work, so yeah. Um, we're, we're working on it. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm running, but not, you know, two and a half miles is about it. So run the other day. <coughs> And I'm out on a trail. There's, there's no civilization around. And I'm running along, and something catches my eye in the dirt. And I... You must just look for things. <laughs> he does. And, and, <laughs> and I, I said, wow. And it, went, and it was something. And, it's, <clears throat> and this, is, this is legitimate, and it's for you. And I found it out on a, on a remote trail yesterday. And this just shows, if you're observant, things that you can find. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <clears throat> in there <laughs> a square nail a square, square nail. nail an old square nail. not, yeah, not yeah. a merkin i thought you were going to bring in a nope, merkin nope no merkins this a is square, a go. square nail a square well thank you for the square nail and the symbolism of that is <laughs> i found it where <laughs> it shouldn't have been <laughs> <laughs> there's no no building there's nothing around and that would just out square, <laughs> square nail square <clears> nail <throat> Well, the story that Tony has is one of your runs, you, Tom, and Tony. We ran. We came in. The noon hour. You came in. We showered. You oh, sho the worst day of my <laughs> the life. Worst <laughs> the worst day of my life. Tell, tell, oh. us, tell us about the worst day of your oh. life. <laughs> in this, where, we, where we'd shower, there were hooks that we would go <laughs> and, and hang, our, hang our clothes on, and then there was only... You're a little bit red. <laughs> uh, well, it was the worst day of my life, for heaven's sake. Uh, there was there was two showers. Was it two showers or just one? I think there was just one. Yeah, just one. So we'd take turns showering. We didn't shower together. I want you to know that. <laughs> uh, sometimes Tony and Tom did. <laughs> but usually when I wasn't there. When you were there. <laughs> <laughs> so one shower. So we'd take turns showering. So my turn, I go in and shower, and I come out. And I reach up and grab my underwear and put them on. And I reach up and grab my pants. And <coughs> I look at my pants. And there's underwear sitting in the pocket <laughs> of my pants. And I, I look down and I look And down. I have no underwear. 
and at this point. And so, are you dressed? No, no. he's about ready to get dressed, and he's looking up on the wall. <laughs> Where's my underwear? <laughs> and, Where's my? And pants? I said, Oh shoot! I put on Tony's <laughs> underwear. <laughs> <laughs> so I took the underwear <laughs> off and I started to give it to Tony <laughs> and he grabbed him and threw him in the wastebasket. <laughs> <laughs> Worst day of my life. Put on, and I didn't have enough time to go shower again. <laughs> you did. <laughs> I you did. did. I, had to, I had to just <laughs> gut up and put on my underwear and go back to work. <laughs> and Tony was going to bring that underwear. Symbolically. Well, symbolically. He was going to bring. <laughs> he was going to bring. That, <laughs> that is. That uh -huh. is. That. That's uh. cute, Chuck. That's cute. Well, we still have a few minutes, but. Um, all right. So. Oh, you, you want to know about running? How when I got started running? Okay, we yeah. have a, we have a minute. Okay, one minute. One minute. To, this will be the conclusion of today's show, but let's, this last minute is significant. I, 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 the real, I've always been exercising my whole life, but the real running started 1978. I was at a picnic in the Auburn Park and went into the restroom and a, and a guy was leaning over the urinal, kind of groaning, and I asked him if he was all right, and he said, I feel great, I just ran 100 miles. <laughs> and that, to my knowledge, was the first award ceremony for the run. Okay. You know, they, they, uh, Gordy had done it the year before, okay. but there was there was like ten guys or something that that did it, and the first organized group. And I came out of there to my and went to my wife. The most amazing thing, uh, this guy, this that group, they've run a hundred miles, and she started talking about misguided goals and, <laughs> and, and people going off on weird things. So I swapped out my wife. <laughs> started running. <laughs> <laughs> Makes so sense. there you go. Ma Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So did I do that in a minute? You got you, you did Yeah, good. you did. You did. You did. You well, did. Well, you did, did finish good. Western States. So yes. Well, yeah. You yep. did finish under 24 hours. Yep. 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 And that was what year? Uh, 90. 90. Yeah. So One of those special buckles. <laughs> yeah, I've got the old silver buckle. Sterling silver buckle. Okay. That's so now, now it's the German silver buckles, but okay. I've got the old one that's the original. The, yeah. The good okay. Yeah. Good, good stuff. <clears throat> oh, look at that. That's it.